Thank you all and welcome. This is the Health Professions Advising Center's presentation for writing a award-winning personal statement. I'm Amber Nicholson and we're gonna spend the next about 90 minutes talking about what a personal statement is, how to approach a personal statement. We're gonna review the prompts for the different professional school applications. We're going to discuss ways to approach writing and the format in which, like the content in which you should include in your personal statement. And then we're gonna finish with some do's and don'ts in terms of writing a personal statement. So to start off, what is a personal statement? This is really your first opportunity to convey to the admissions committee your path to a professional program outside of your GPA, your standardized exam scores, and what might be available on the paper parts of your transcript. So this is your opportunity to show them what your path has been, what your story has been, and to provide personal information and context to parts of your application that they might not see through grades and standardized exam scores. It is a significantly important part of your application as every part of your application is. It is read by admissions committees and it should be constructed professionally and carefully to convey your motivation for pursuing medicine, dentistry, pharmacy, physical therapy, whatever your health profession is. With that being said, I do think it's something that should be professional and it should be something that could be constructed carefully. But I also want students to remember this isn't going to be an award-winning piece of literature that will be so awe-inspiring that an admissions committee is going to halt a committee review and immediately accept an applicant because their personal statement was so amazing. That's, I think, an idea that most students have with their personal statement, that it needs to be so fantastic an admissions committee is going to accept you on the spot. But in reality, they're looking for somebody to professionally articulate why specifically they're interested in a specific health profession. They're looking for you to be able to share that in your personal statement, to be able to share what has prepared you for that profession and possibly what might be your future goals with that profession, okay? So it is kind of important to understand what you're trying to convey here. It is read by members of the admissions committee and that could be faculty, like people who have PhDs. It could be practitioners, so MDs, DOs, DDSs, PharmDs, DPTs. It could be other first and second year pre-health or first and second year health students, so somebody who's an MS1 or an MS2. It could be read by staff administrators like the uh, student affairs staff or other members of the staff that help with admissions or it could be read by members of the community that participate in the admissions process. So there's lots of people who might read your personal statement. So it want, you want it to be something that's kind of digestible by a broad audience. They are important because as I said previously, it is your opportunity to convey your motivation, your interest, your values, your path, your story, it's to be able to show those personal characteristics and your uniqueness that isn't gonna be evident in your grades and your test scores. It's your opportunity to really talk to the admissions committee and show them that you're a person outside of good grades and good extracurriculars and good standardized exam scores. And possibly kind of disclaimer here, it may allow for an explanation of an area of your application that might be lacking in some, some spot. Now, if a student had one C grade in your entire academic transcript and overall had a 3.8 GPA, that's probably not something that I would recommend spending space on in a personal statement. So in terms of allowing for possible explanation of an issue in your, app, in your application, that's something you would wanna to talk to Charlie and I about to make sense if it's worth spending valuable characters on whatever you think you might wanna explain in your personal statement. So kind of disclaimer there. And then why are they difficult to write? I don't think anybody here has any question about why these are difficult to write. So I'm just gonna validate what you guys already know here. Most of my students do not like writing about themselves. They find it really easy to write about an English paper or a history paper or a scientific paper. But when it comes to showcasing your personal strengths and your path and your story. Students really worry about um, humility. They worry about showing arrogance and that's generally not something my students ever do, but they worry about it. 
they have so much to say they have no idea where to begin with a personal statement so most of you are 22 ish maybe a little bit older so you have a lot of life under your belt and students tend to want to put all 22 years of life into their one page personal statement right obviously that's not going to happen so how do you self-censor and how do you decide what goes in your personal statement and what doesn't? Because obviously your entire life history isn't going to fit in 5,300 characters, including spaces. This one I think everybody can identify with. Students really worry about having the perfect first sentence. And again, this comes back to what I said originally. They want a sentence so amazing that the admissions committee is going to accept them right on the spot. And again, that's not going to happen. Sure, you don't want to start with the um, cliche, ever since I was 12, I wanted to be a physician, or I've always known I wanted to be a dentist. Of course, you don't want to start with cliche openings like that, um, but there really isn't this idea of a perfect first sentence. Most of my students really don't recognize what makes them unique and special and different. They kind of really think that they're pretty boring or pretty ununique. But as we start talking and we kind of peel away the onion to say, and we really get to understand your path and your story, there's really some great things that you guys have all done that you probably would want to highlight in your personal statement. So kind of really knowing your resume and knowing your life history and really understanding that there probably are things that you've been through that are different than others can be helpful to highlight in your application. Trying to write a personal statement without a strategy, without a writing strategy that is, that's not something we're going to talk a lot about today because I don't consider myself a writing expert. We're gonna talk a lot more about content today, what should and should not be included in a personal statement. But there is a writing specialist in the ARC who has a PhD in English who would be very good at helping you all create a writing strategy for your writing style. And then the last couple things, most of you are science students. Science students generally lack strong reading and writing skills. Most science students take English in their freshman year and fast forward three years later and they haven't written a paper more than one page since their freshman year. So they, they really struggle with the writing skills that are necessary for personal statements. And then lastly, the prompts can be very broad and very vague, which can be confusing when you already don't know how to approach a personal statement. With that being said, we're going to transition into reviewing the prompts for different professional school applications. I have two goals with doing this. One is simply to inform you of what the prompt is and what the character count is. Okay? Some of you might not know what the prompt for your particular profession is um, or what the length is. So we're going to review that. Secondarily, some of the prompts are very vague and some of the prompts are very specific. And one of the reasons we like to do this in, the, in a group is that so you can see what all of the prompts are for all health professions and some of the prompts like veterinary medicine really give you a clear idea of what admissions committees are gonna be looking for um, out of a personal statement. So this is where an idea of interprofessional collaboration comes together and where a pre-med student can really learn a lot from a pre-physical therapy or veterinary medicine prompt because they're much more specific. So the first one, and most of you probably have seen this or knew this already, but AMCAS, the MD application, the prompt is, please provide an explanation of why you wanna to go to medical school, right? So basically, why do you wanna be a physician? Really difficult question to address. That's a huge question. It's a very broad, how do you digest this? How do you break it down and how do you approach it? We're gonna talk about that later, but right now, it's why do you want to be a physician? And the prompt for AMCAS is 5,300 characters, including spaces. That is about a page and a half single spaced, 5,300 characters, including spaces. It's not a word count. It is a character count and it does include spaces. So that's really important to know. It's about, like I said, a page and a half, which in all reality is not very long. For DO, osteopathic medicine, Basically, why do you want to be an osteopathic physician? Not really much different than the MD personal statement prompt, but it's 4,500 characters including spaces, which is a page single spaced. 
So instead of why do you want to be a physician, it's specifically why do you want to be an osteopathic physician. For PA, why do you want to be a physician assistant? Also very, very vague, very broad. It's 5,000 characters, including spaces. For dentistry, why do you want to be a dentist? Also very broad, very general. It's 4,500 characters, including spaces. For physical therapy, it's basically asking how will you embody the vision of a physical therapist? Why do you want to be a physical therapist? Again, 4,500 characters, including spaces. Then we start transitioning into some personal statements that give you a lot more direction and seem to make a little bit more sense. So for occupational therapy, why have you selected occupational therapy as your career? How does it relate to your immediate and long-term goals? And describe your personal education and professional background that's going to help you achieve those goals, right? Lot more specific, gives you a little bit more direction in what OT programs might be looking for. For optometry, your decision for becoming an optometrist, including your preparation and training for the profession, aptitude and motivation, your interest in optometry, and future career goals. Again, gives you a little bit more direction in terms of what an admissions committee might be looking for. FarmCast is actually the exact same prompt as OTCast. So optometry, um, excuse me, occupational therapist and pharmacist, same prompt, just different professions. 4,500 characters, including spaces. And then my favorite is vet med. Um, this one I think is really clear and it's really the, fl the flow and the format we're going to follow today. So briefly describe how you developed an interest in veterinary medicine or medicine or dentistry or pharmacy or physical therapy. I think this applies to any profession. Discuss the activities and experiences that have contributed to your preparation for this program. Again, I think that's true for medicine, dentistry, pharmacy, optometry, all of them. Your understanding of the profession and your career goals and objectives. This to me is a very clear personal statement prompt that shows students exactly what an admissions committee is looking for. Now, although the medicine and dental and, and dental and PA personal statement prompt said, why med, why dent, and why PA? I think this is the information that you should be conveying to the admissions committee. Okay, so that's why I would like to do this as a group so you guys can learn from each other's prompts and really see that there is a lot of direction in other professions that can really be helpful and applicable to the profession that you might be interested in. So with that being said, where to begin, where to start? And it is important to understand that this is your way to convey your path and your journey toward your profession. And again, that's going to be a very long path and journey, and it's not all going to be included in your personal statement. Your personal statement is going to capture um, specific information. It's not going to include chronologically every milestone that you've been through for your 23, 25, 28 years of life. In addition to that, my disclaimer, as I said earlier, was that we're going to go through my advising and HPAC's advising on what we would suggest students to include in their personal statement. But if there's a clear vision that you have for how you want to convey your path and your journey towards your health profession, we will be more than supportive of that. Personal statements is a very subjective process and there's no right way to write a personal statement we're going to give some helpful tips for students who aren't really sure how to approach this at all and are just looking for some help. So there's a handout that you all received when you came in the room and it included um, some questions to consider, to think about and maybe to write a little bit about that will help you kind of get your application rolling. And these questions um, could be true for your personal statement. They might be true for some things in regards to your extracurricular activities or even true for um, disadvantaged statements as some applications do give you an opportunity to talk about your personal background and your family background. So the first question, what special, unique or, impre or is impressive about your life and your life story? So really think about what was your upbringing like? What was your family life like? What obstacles maybe have you had to go through? Is there any obstacles or hardships that you've had to overcome in your life? 
Things like this will likely not show up too much in your personal statement, but they might show up in your disadvantage statement um, or maybe discussed in an interview. So it's helpful to reflect on them. This I think is really important and we're definitely gonna talk more about how you initially became interested in medicine and dentistry pharmacy. Most likely this personal story of how this interest came about is gonna be probably a first paragraph in your personal statement. So how did you even become interested in pharmacy? Why specifically have you selected this field of interest? You know, that's not an easy thing to, to answer of course but it certainly cannot be because I want to quote unquote help people, right? That's very basic, that's very fundamental. That's where your, your um, interest started was wanting to help people, but essentially to commit your life to medicine, dentistry, pharmacy and the like, you really need to know specifically why that profession is the right way for you to help somebody, right? Physicians aren't the only healthcare providers who help people. So why specifically is whatever profession of interest to you? What influences have you had extracurricularly, paid work, research, volunteer, um, and the like, teaching, tutoring, conferences? What influences did you do extracurricularly that have been motivating along your path, right? So this is just getting an idea of what your resume looks like. What have you done outside the classroom? There's a whole section in the application about extracurricular activities. So. Hopefully you have this track somewhere, you know what your resume looks like, but for students who haven't been keeping track of their extracurriculars, this question might help you think about what types of things have I done during my undergraduate education that I wanna talk about in my application. How did you explore and confirm your interest in dentistry or physical therapy? What clinical experiences did you engage in that have allowed you to confirm that you're at a point where you're willing to commit the rest of your working life to medical school, dental school, or pharmacy school, or PT school, whatever prof profession we're talking about. Um, long term, what might your career goals be? For this, I tend to take a, a more overarching approach. Very broadly, what are your career goals? Do you want to work in primary care? Do you want to do community-based care? Are you looking to do research and be a clinician? Are you looking to be a clinical educator? You know, kind of very broadly, what do you want to do with your career? What types of relationships do you want to build with patients? For pre-meds, I would not recommend um, including specific types of medicine that you're currently thinking about. Like when I bring this up, I don't say, I don't mean, I want you to say, I want to be a neurologist or a cardiologist or a plastic surgeon. I want you to be more broad um, in terms of the types of things you might want to do with your career, not um, the specific medical specialty you're thinking of. Does that make sense? What personal characteristics do you have that are translatable to the profession? So um, for my pre-dents, you know, dentists need to work with their hands, right? We call it manual dexterity. What types of things have you done to work with your hands? Or for my pre-farm, Pharmacists have to talk to a lot of patients all day, every day. What types of communication skills have you built, right? Physicians, they need to be compassionate and empathetic. How have you developed compassion and empathy? Those are just a few examples, but I would want you to think about what personal characteristics do you think are important and valuable in your profession and how have you embodied those characteristics? And then lastly, are there any gaps or discrepancies in your academic record that you need to explain? So this goes back at the beginning. This use should be used very sparingly. Um, I would want you to talk to Charlie or I, your advisor, about whether or not it's something you should spend valuable space in your personal statement to discuss um, academic deficiencies in your record, if, if you should do that in your personal statement or not. So we, we could talk more about that um, individually. So those are some questions to consider prior to kind of starting writing your personal statement. It helps get the creative juices flowing to get an idea of some of the things you might want to talk about. So I said we weren't going to talk much about writing process and we're not. I do think you need to have a writing process. You need to figure out, are you the type of person who uses an outline? Are you the type of person who just writes stream of consciousness? Are you the type of person who does all of your content and then goes and does the introduction and conclusion? Do you like to do mind maps? 
Um, there's a lot of different writing styles and I am not a writing expert and I don't feel that I could help you identify what your preferred writing style is, but there is a writing center in the Academic Resource Center that would be able to help with that. They also help with grammar and um, themes and flow and sentence structure because uh, Jennifer does have a PhD in English, so she is a writing expert and she can de definitely help you with the writing process. We're going to spend the rest of our time talking about content. Along the same lines as writing process, I want you all to have some type of main point or theme to your personal statement because again, you can't put 25 years of life into 5,300 characters including spaces. It's completely impossible for you to tell your entire life story in a personal statement. So you have to get an idea of what story do you want to tell in your personal statement. And then you want to show and demonstrate your path and the characteristics that you bring to the table. You want to be able to highlight them and demonstrate them and not just say it. So the saying is show, don't tell, right? You really have to be able to convey that you possess certain characteristics based on evidence and not just say that you have them. And then this comes back to uh, writing style. I think that there's kind of two different types of styles for writing personal statements. Um, I've called them quote unquote creative writing style versus a cover letter style. And I'm going to focus a lot more on what I call the cover letter style, which is kind of a professional articulation of why you're interested in this profession and what you've done to explore and confirm your interest and why you're qualified for the profession. So it's very professional. It's very um, straightforward and to the point, but that doesn't mean that creative writing style is wrong. It just means it's not the way that we're really going to spend our time today. Because most of my undergraduate students, like I said, they really lack the writing skills to be able to effectively tell a story and make a point at the same time. It's a very difficult. You have to have really, really good English skills, really good writing skills to be able to use a lot of imagery and storytelling in your writing, but still at the end of the personal statement, answer the question. So it's absolutely possible to do that, but we're not going to talk a lot about that today because I think it's really difficult to approach that effectively. But again, if you have a clear vision of how you want to tell your story and that's more in line with a creative writing approach, that's absolutely okay. It's, you know, you don't have to follow my way or HPAC's way. And then for the writing process, we did talk originally about character counts, right? 5,300 characters or 4,500 characters. That's the character count you need to get your personal statement to at the end. But when you initially write your personal statement, try not to be thinking too much about character count because it might mess up your flow. And I've seen some early drafts of personal statements that have really great intro and they're really kind of going through their extracurriculars and telling their story. And then it comes to an abrupt end. And I'll ask the student like, what happened here? And they'll say, oh, I ran out of characters. Right, so when you initially write your drafts, write your whole story and your whole path, and then we'll cut it back and condense from there. So don't be constrained by the character count initially. And then lastly, for some students, it's really helpful to just leave the beginning till the end, or maybe you do write, you know, ever since I was 12, I wanted to be a dentist, and walk away from it, and go on and write the rest of your personal statement, and then you can come back and finesse the end. Generally, the last, uh, the, excuse me, generally the first sentence of a personal statement is the last sentence to get written. It gets changed and modified and, um, and updated so frequently. So sometimes it's helpful to just kind of use stream of consciousness to get, back, get past the first sentence and then go on and, and polish it later. So that's really all the tips I have in terms of writing process because like I said, we're going to spend a lot more time on formatting and content. So this would be my recommendation um, of a format in terms of content to follow in your personal statement. And this is more in line with the cover letter approach to writing a personal statement. But if this is not in line with your vision for your personal statement, that's totally okay because this is a subjective process. So this is just my advice. So generally personal statements are gonna be four to five paragraphs, really not very long. The first paragraph absolutely should tell me why are you interested in X health profession, medicine, dentistry, and pharmacy. 
how did this even start? What was the spark to this fire? And this is absolutely going to be some personal story, anecdote, um, story, uh, your own health crisis, maybe a health crisis of a family member. That's absolutely going to be part of your personal statement. What it's not going to be is your entire personal statement. Okay. Cause this is a big question for students. How much of um, you know, the health crisis that I went through or the loss of my grandmother or the loss of a parent or the disability of a sibling, like how much of that should be in my personal statement? And it's absolutely how you likely became initially interested in a professional program. But it, at the end of the day, it's not the only reason that you are pursuing this profession. It's not the reason you've chosen to commit the rest of your life to medicine, dentistry, or pharmacy. But it is, however, how you initially became interested in the profession, okay? So I absolutely think that those personal stories are important and valuable, but they're gonna take up six or 700 characters. They're not gonna take up a page and a half. After you've told me how did you become initially interested in a profession, you're gonna talk how, about how you explored and confirmed your interest in that profession. Here's where I wanna know about your clinical experiences. What did you do to explore your interest in healthcare in general? Did you volunteer in a hospital? Did you go to free clinics? Um, did you get a medical license? Probably not that last part, but what did you do to explore your interest in healthcare, right? Most of the time it's gonna be patient centric. Did you volunteer in a dental office? Did you volunteer in a pharmacy? Did you volunteer in a hospital? What was that experience like? What did you learn from that experience? What did you gain from that experience? Okay. I don't just wanna know, you know, I walked around and fed patients and I changed linens and I helped nurses. That's great information, but I wanna know what you learned from the experience. What did you learn about patient care? What did you learn about interprofessional collaboration? What did you learn about supporting patients? What did you learn about communication? You know, these are just some examples. Really, what did you learn from the experience? Then in addition to that, how did you explore medicine, dentistry, pharmacy, physical therapy, optometry specifically, right? You probably shadowed. What did you learn from shadowing? What did you see? What did you experience from the shadow? Okay. So this is what I say, how did you explore and confirm your interest? This is likely gonna be um, some explanation of your clinical experiences because you have to get to the point where you can tell me specifically why is medicine the right profession for you? I can't tell you that there's a right answer to this question. You know, I can't tell you that there's a right answer to why you wanna be a dentist or why you wanna be a pharmacist, but I think there's two wrong answers that we could probably all agree upon. One is because I wanna help people, right? That generally is not going to be an answer that an admissions committee is gonna find really specific or valuable enough. Like, I wanna be a physician because I wanna help people. Probably not what they're looking for. The second thing is, I like math and science classes or I'm fascinated by the human body. I think that's also very general, um, very basic, very much what a freshman student might say, right? When I meet with freshman students and I say, why do you wanna be a dentist? They say, I wanna help people and I like math and science classes. That's a very good place to foundationally start, but it's really not where you should be at when you're applying to a professional program. So this is how you're working up to really why is this profession the right way for you to commit the rest of your professional career. We're talking to like 40 years, you're gonna be working in this career. So it's really important to have an idea of why it's the right profession for you. It's again, showing that you understand the roles and responsibilities of that profession and why it's gonna allow you to help people. You know, cause you don't wanna just say you wanna help people. You need to be more specific than that. So that's basically three paragraphs already, maybe two long paragraphs. Then I would recommend moving on and talking a little bit about the personal characteristics that you possess that are in line with that profession. So if you think pharmacists should be able to communicate with patients, you probably want to demonstrate to the admissions committee how you've developed communication skills. Or if there are several characteristics that you really feel are important as a physician or a physical therapist, you might also want to demonstrate how you've gained those characteristics as well. Probably no more than three examples. Three would be kind of a lot. But I like examples in three, so that's a good note. And then lastly, the um, kind of final paragraph or conclusion, so to speak, might be discussing any particular interests that you might have. 
Some of my students are really passionate about primary and preventative care, and they might want to talk about that in their personal statement. They might be really passionate about working with underserved communities or health education. They might be really passionate about being a clinical educator themselves um, or for pharmacy, maybe going on and specializing in like ambulatory care, clinical pharmacy. You might be really interested in research and you want a couple of research as part of your profession. This is your, your opportunity to kind of give a, a long-term picture of what you expect your career to look like, but not your opportunity to commit to one particular type of healthcare, right? So this is, I don't want to see, I want to be a cardiologist or a neurosurgeon. I want to see more broadly what you envision with the future of your profession. Um, and again, this should be more of a conclusion and less of a summary. I think I might say that a little bit, little bit later in this presentation as well. But you don't need in your conclusion to go back and summarize everything that you just told me, right? It's only a page and a half. Your conclusion really should be a conclusion, right? Looking forward, this is what I see in my profession. My goals and my interests are these things. You don't need to go back and summarize how you initially became interested in medicine and how you explored and confirmed your interests because you just told me that two paragraphs ago. Does this format make sense to you guys? So this again is something that I hope will help you um, in combination with looking at some of the other personal statement prompts like the veterinary medicine personal statement prompts. You can see that they really align and it's giving an admissions committee a clear picture of why you're pursuing a particular profession um, in a very professional um, and straightforward and direct way. If there's a different way that you want to approach your personal statement, we can definitely talk more about that. For anybody who's applying to post back programs, um, everything that I just said applies with some additions. So you might also be asked um, why you are applying to a post back. So likely you're going to be asked, well, why do you want to be a physician, a dentist, or a pharmacist? And that previous slide applies. You might also be asked, well, why are you applying to a post back program? And in that sense, um, this will be a separate, a separate question. And in that question, you do want to be able to specifically identify what your academic difficulty has been. So sometimes students talk about time management skills. Um, they might have really lacked study skills, or maybe they had test anxiety. Um, or that there was a particular trauma in their life. So what happened to affect you academically? What specifically did you do to correct the issue? Did you start using the ARC services? Did you go to SI? Did you go to drop-in tutoring? Did you quit your job? You know, what did you do to change your circumstances? And what evidence can you provide that what you did worked? And that's generally pointing to some significant upward trend in your record. Like you might say, um, you know, I, I really lack study skills, so on and so forth. I started using the ARC services, SI, drop-in tutoring. And as you can see, as of fall of 2014, I haven't received grades below uh, B+. So you identify the issue, you explain what you did to correct the issue, and you demonstrate that what you did worked. You might also be asked why you're applying to that particular school's post back program. So why are you applying to UCR's post back, or why are you applying to Cal State LA's post back? So you would want to be familiar with that program, you know, look at their website. What information do they provide? What classes do you take? Do they do MCAT prep or not? Do you get to do extracurriculars? Is there an advising component? What do they really sell you in their program? And you would want to explain why those things are a good fit for you. So this one's a little bit easier because you're going to kind of just be selling the program back to itself, essentially. Um, but usually with post backs, you're asked those three questions. You know, why med, dent, farm, PT, whatever it might be. Why are you applying to a post back? You know, why aren't you applying just directly to a professional program? And then why specifically are you interested in our school? When reviewing your personal statement, I really encourage you guys all to make sure that your personal statement sounds like you. And sometimes as you have multiple reviewers, you can get lost in your personal statement. Particularly if you have, you know, five, six, ten people, different people looking at your personal statement, they're going to change phrasing and vocabulary and you might really get lost in your personal statement and it might not be a reflection of who you are anymore. 
And it's really important to make, make, make sure that you maintain yourself in your personal statement because you're going to get asked these questions again in an interview and you don't want to articulate it a different way verbally than you did in writing in your application. So A, it's really important to actually write your own application and B, it's important to make sure that it, it really is true to yourself. You want to make sure it's well organized, that the ideas flow from kind of sentence to sentence and paragraph to paragraph, that it's logical, it's likely chronological, um, you are making significant points and you're giving evidence to support those points. I have had a few students tell personal statements or write personal statements not chronologically. They were successful, but it was really difficult. Most students approach personal statements in a chronological order because it's, it's easier for the reader to follow that way. Does it have a good focus or are there too many points? Um, so like I said several times already, there's not going to be a way to include your entire life history in your personal statement. So you do need to decide what point or points you're trying to make and focus on, on actually making those points. And then are there any redundancies or cliches? Are you repeating yourself? You know, are you wasting characters on sentences that are redundant? or that are cliches, right? Ever since I was five, I wanted to be a pharmacist or I wanna be a physician because I like math and science classes. Like you probably wanna avoid making those cliches and talk about things that are really valuable and specific to you. And then are you giving evidence to support what you're saying? So if you're talking about being a good communicator, are you actually giving me evidence to support that you've built communication skills? Or are you just saying, trust me, I'm a good communicator? Right, you really wanna make sure you have the evidence behind what you're saying. And is the conclusion a conclusion or is it a summary? Since it is such a short personal statement, I don't think that you need to spend the last 600 characters going back and to telling me what you told me the 2000 characters before that. It should be more of a vision of what you see moving forward. And I cannot stress this enough, grammar, 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 spelling, spelling, spelling. Um, Again, there are writing experts on campus that can help with that. I will catch some things, Charlie will catch some things, but there will be a lot of things we won't catch. And once it's submitted, it cannot be edited. Okay, so if you submit your personal statement and realize that you made a spelling error or a grammatical error, it cannot be fixed on the back end. It's printed and it's done. So we're going to move on to other parts of the application because although the personal statement is really important and it does take a lot of writing, there are other parts of the application that also take a lot of writing that you do need to expend some energy on. There is what's called a work and activity section in each one of these applications that generally I'm generalizing here, but there's usually about 15 entries. Some professional programs is more than 15 of things that you get to put in your application. And each entry has a defined character count. So for um, pharmacy, dentistry, and physical therapy, you only get 175 characters for each activity, which is a sentence. So it's really not very long, um, not too much that you have to say, but that's a good thing and a bad thing, right? The good thing is, is it doesn't take a lot of time because it's only a sentence. But the bad thing is you really don't get to showcase what you've done outside the classroom because it's only a sentence. Medicine, um, MDDO, optometry, and um, PA, and occupational therapy, each extracurricular activity, you get six to 700 characters, including spaces, which is about a paragraph. So each activity, you have to be able to tell me or the admissions committee, what you did and what you learned in that experience. And you have about a paragraph to do that. To make matters a little bit more complicated, if you're applying to allopathic medicine, AMCAS, to be a physician, in addition to 15 extracurriculars that you get 700 characters per extracurricular activity, you get three extracurricular activities that you get to select as your most meaningful extracurricular activity. And for those three activities, you get an additional 1,325 characters on top of the 700 that you already got. So I'll say that in a different way because that may have been kind of complicated. You get 15 extracurricular activities for um, allopathic for MD medicine. Three of those 15, you get just about 2,000 characters 
for that activity, which is about three paragraphs. All of the other activities, you get one paragraph per activity. Okay, so that's an extensive amount of writing. So if you're thinking about applying to MD medical schools, not only do you have 5,300 characters including spaces for your personal statement, but you have to write three three-paragraph essays for your extracurriculars and then every other activity and additional paragraph. So it's a lot of writing. Most applications have about a paragraph for their activities and like I said originally dentistry and pharmacy and PT it's a sentence. So generally I recommend starting with your extracurricular activities. It really helps you get the writing juices flowing. It's much easier to talk about individual extracurriculars than it is to approach why you want to be a dentist. So I like starting with the extracurricular activities and going through your resume. And then again for MD to also do those first most important activities. I think it's easier to start with that before you start with your personal statement. You also have a disadvantage statement in a lot of the applications, um, medical schools, MD, DO, dentistry. Um, some of them have disadvantage statements, some of them don't. And um, the MD disadvantage statement is 1,325 characters, which is kind of a long paragraph. And the dental school disadvantage statement is 4,500 characters, including spaces. That's just as long as the personal statement. So it's a full page single spaced. Now, what you all are thinking at this point is, how do I know if I'm disadvantaged? And what do I say if I do identify myself as disadvantaged? Both of those are great questions. Being disadvantaged is something that you're gonna self-identify. You tell the admissions committee, do I feel that I identify as a disadvantaged student or not? Okay, so it is a self-identification. And there is no black and white answer to that question. It really truthfully is based on your experiences. These are things that I have found routinely um, come up with the students that I'm working with. And all of these things would lend itself to a student being considered quote unquote disadvantaged. Okay. First and foremost, it's more of a focus on your primary education, your K through 12 years. Not as much in college, although college is fine, what they're really asking you about was your upbringing, okay? So are you a first generation American? Are you a first generation college student? You know, those are not mutually exclusive. Was your first language something other than English? Is your primary language spoken at home something other than English? What is your parents' education level? Did they go to college or do they have a middle school education or something in between? What do they do for an occupation? Are, what we, are they what we call blue collar workers or white collar workers? Do they work in labor jobs or are they professionals? Maybe what was the household income? If you grew up in a single parent household and not a two parent household. If you grew up in what's called communal living. Communal living means multiple families are living in the same house, which is really common. There might be um, parents, grandparents, and aunts and uncles and cousins all living in the same house. Where you grew up, if you grew up in, a, in an area that's maybe low income or high crime, high drug area, or potentially if you've had to work to pay for school or maybe are a parent or have military experience um, or a disabled veteran, um, lots of things can lend themselves to being considered disadvantaged. This is certainly not an exhaustive list. I'm sure we could talk about more things that would be true of allowing a student to identify a disadvantage, but these are things that I see every single day. And probably most of you can say at least half of these things apply to you. UCR is a population of students that are considered low income minority disadvantaged students. So most of my students can identify as disadvantaged. Some of them do and some of them don't. It, it really is up to you. But when trying to answer this question for yourself, I want you to think about these things, you know, your K through 12 years and some of these things to help identify. Um, would you identify as disadvantaged? If you do, these are the things you would also want to talk about in that statement. Okay, it tends to be more of your upbringing. Then after you do your primary application, so up until this point, we've talked about your personal statement, your extracurricular activities, and your disadvantage statement. All of that goes into your primary application along with your grades and your letters and things that we're not gonna talk about today. 
after you submit your primary application, it gets reviewed and it gets sent off to each individual school. At that point in time, individual schools will invite students to submit either a secondary application or supplementary application, depending on what program we're talking about. Dental schools call it supplementals. Most other professions call it secondaries. So after you submit your primary application and you think, whew, I'm done with all of this writing. I think I'm good. Now I just have to wait. You do have to wait, but you will hopefully be invited to submit secondaries. Secondaries are applications that are school specific and they generally are going to be asking you why X school, you know, why the UCR School of Medicine or why UCSF School of Dentistry or why USC School of Pharmacy. It's going to be your opportunity now to speak directly to that school and tell that school while, why you are interested in them, right? Because in your personal statement, you didn't say anything about going to any particular school. You just said, this is why I want to be a pharmacist. This is your opportunity to now sell yourself to um, Ohio State or Michigan State or Johns Hopkins or Yale or Columbia or UCR or UCLA or UCSF. This is your opportunity to talk directly to the school. They are generally essays. I would say usually short answer essays, like they might be something that might be a paragraph or so, but there might be three to five essay questions or 10 to 15 essay questions. I, you know, it's, it's hard to say, I have to really generalize here, but there's gonna be multiple short answer questions that you are going to have to answer specifically to each institution. These are going to be questions that you want to expand on the information you said in your primary application. You do not want to duplicate what you said in your primary application in your secondary application. You might be recycling extracurricular experiences and that's okay, but you don't want to just copy and paste what you put in your primary application into your secondary application. You want to give them new information or expand on information or say it in a different way. So don't copy and paste from your primary app. And then submit your secondary applications as quickly as possible, regardless of when the school deadline is. Remember that professional programs are on rolling admissions. So the sooner you submit your application, the sooner your application gets reviewed, the sooner you can get an interview, and the sooner you hopefully will get an acceptance. So if you dilly dally on submitting any part of your application, it's going to push back when you might get an interview and when you might get acceptance, or maybe that won't happen at all. So my particular rule for secondary applications is you want to submit them in 10 to 14 days after the date in which they've been received. Even if the deadline says we don't need this back for six months or we don't need it back for two months, submit them as quickly as you can. These also generally include additional fees. So they could be anywhere probably from 60 to $100 per secondary application which is why Charlie and I are always recommending um, being mindful of how many schools that you apply to because there are primary application fees and secondary application fees. And then if there's five essay questions per secondary, not only is that maybe $500, but it could be 50 essays, right? So you wanna be kind of mindful of how many schools that you might apply to. Most students apply somewhere between, for dentistry, I would say dentistry, pharmacy, 10 to 12 schools, Medicine, it might be 15 to 20 schools. So you, you want to be mindful of how many schools you might apply to. Awesome. Almost done. So we're going to summarize a little bit here and talk about um, just again, what are things I don't really want you guys to do in terms of my advice and things that I find to be successful strategies. So in, this is for your personal statement. For your personal statement, it should not be a narrative of your resume, okay? Your personal statement should just not be you going through 10 different extracurricular activities and what you did in each extracurricular activity. That's what your extracurricular section's for. Yes, you will be referencing your extracurricular activities in your personal statement, but I don't want you to just spend your whole personal statement writing 15 extracurriculars. That's why I want you to do that section first. I don't want you to assume that anybody can read your mind and knows why you want to be a physician, a dentist, or a pharmacist, or 
assumes that you know what the roles and responsibilities of that person is. This is your opportunity to really showcase that you know what these professionals do for an, a living, for an occupation, and you know what they do with and for patients, and you're able to articulate why that's the right fit for you. Okay? Don't assume that they know why you want to be a dentist. you got to tell them. Don't write a school-specific personal statement. Your personal statement's going to go to 10, 15, 20 different professional programs, um, so you don't really want to try to sell yourself to just one school. This probably is more important for um, UCR in terms of the AMCAS application because that AMCAS application is going to go to other medical schools. So you don't really want to talk about why you want to come to the UCR School of Medicine in your AMCAS application. You would talk about wanting to come to the UCR School of Medicine in your secondary application from UCR specifically. Your personal statement is more about why you want to be a physician in general. Don't have too many thoughts. I think I've said that five times now. Um, do develop a couple good ideas that you want to convey in your personal statement about your path to a professional program, but your entire life history is not going to fit in a page and a half. Please don't make excuses for a subpar GPA or MCAT, DAT, or PCAT, or OAT score. If you are not academically ready to apply to a professional program, you shouldn't be applying to a professional program. Okay, so if you have to come in and say, well, I'm going to apply to medical school, but my GPA is a 3.2, and so I want to address in my application why my GPA is a little bit on the low side, I'm going to say you shouldn't be applying. You should be doing a post bac program to get your GPA up until you are competitive to be applying to a professional program. Okay, so if you're not academically competitive, you should not be applying to a professional program. And then please don't promise or beg for admissions. I see this a lot in conclusions that students really struggle with how to end their personal statement. So they start promising that they'll be so grateful for the opportunity to be a physician or um, they just would be really grateful if they could get an interview and meet somebody in person. I don't really want you guys to make promises about improved grades or beg for admission in your conclusion which I see is a very natural tendency because students really struggle with how to end their personal statement. So no begging, no excuses, no promises in your personal statement. Also no name dropping. So if your uncle is on the admissions committee at USC School of Dentistry, I don't care. You might be able to make reference to that in your supplementary application, um, that school specific to use uh, USC, which was the example that I used, but it should not be a part of your primary application. This I don't see too often with UCR students, but I think it's kind of a common issue across the country is pre-health students try to compare themselves to each other. UCR students tend not to do that, but you wanna showcase what you bring to the table and you can do that in a positive way without being derogatory towards another applicant. So you wanna showcase the good qualities that you have, but also being humble. This hopefully goes without saying, but please don't plagiarize. Please do not pay somebody to write your personal statement. This is something you have to be able to stand behind in an interview and don't copy something off the internet. Um, professional programs are starting to use Turnitin and SafeAssign. Um, pharmacy, Farmcast for pharmacy school, they already use this. They run every personal statement through SafeAssign, and if it comes up that there's even 1% plagiarized, that there's sanctions for that. And this is becoming a more common trend. So hopefully you don't need an incentive not to plagiarize, but hopefully that's your incentive. And like I said, this they're gonna ask you this question in an interview. Why do you wanna be a physician? Why do you wanna be a dentist? Why do you wanna be a pharmacist? So if you can't articulate it in your personal statement, you're gonna have a really difficult time articulating it in an interview. So this is good practice. Hopefully this is also silly. Don't write in all caps or all lowercase or use like slang and things. I know with like social media um, and whatnot now, um, there's a lot less formality in writing, but this is a professional application. Um, it should be professional, polished, well-written. So, you know, be sparing on things like that. Please don't go out and use a thesaurus to find every impressive, complicated word you could ever find. 
Just use simple, direct language because you want this to sound like yourself, right? You want to use the same language that you would use in an interview. You want what you write in your application to match the person you are in an interview. Um, I don't think there's really a necess necessity to be very dramatic or use a lot of imagery. Um, I tend to cut a lot of imagery out of personal statements when students tell me, you know, the colors and the sights and the smells and the sounds in the room. Because I think you can make your point without a lot of that imagery. Um, I want to know what was meaningful about this experience. I don't need to know what it smelled like. Right? But that's my personal opinion and that's my advising. For somebody who really wants to tell a story, if that amount of imagery aligns with their storytelling, then I'm not going to touch it. Um, I don't like quotes or poetry in personal statements. This is another really common way I see students try to start their personal statement is they use a quote. Um, it's your personal statement. It should be your words. You are trying to showcase why you want to be a professional program in a professional program. So I don't think quoting somebody else aligns with explaining your path to that profession. So again, this is my advice. And then one of the last things is stories about other people. Again, this is your personal statement. So it really should be about your path to the profession and um, a way to make sure that you stay the focus of your personal statement is to be writing about yourself and not necessarily write about somebody else who may have influenced your path to a profession right it, it should be your path it should be your story and then lastly i said this already with the conclusion in your personal statement i don't want you to claim to be set on a particular type of medicine you want to talk about your career interests from a more broad perspective so getting the negative things out of the way, what should you not do? What should you actually do, right? What are the, the right ways to approach personal statement? Starting early. Every single person here is already doing that. You're getting a head start on um, getting kind of proverbial pen to paper and getting the ideas going. Be honest. Most of you have probably hardships in your life. You don't need to invent them. You just need to be honest about what your personal history is and what your path towards a profession has been. I can't stress proofreading enough and finding the right reviewers for your application. Um, things cannot be edited after they've been submitted. So checking for formatting, checking for errors, spell, checking for grammar and spelling mistakes because once it's submitted, it's finished. And if you submit a personal statement with an error, somebody might question if you might make errors in a patient's chart. Right? We're not really gravitating towards selecting people to be health professionals who make a lot of errors because errors could cost somebody their life. Definitely write at a college level. It needs to be formal. It needs to be professional. It should not be written like a letter to a friend or a post on social media. And select your proofreaders carefully. Someone who's a good writer, that's why I would recommend Jennifer at the ARC. She's the writing specialist. Somebody who knows you well, somebody who really knows your path and your experience, your authoritative voice, where they can really say, you know, this person really does sound like you or you're really coming through on your writing. And then somebody who understands the purpose. And that's where really Charlie and I come in or Teresa Cofield and MSP and her, her group. We really know what professional programs are looking for. We know the content that they're looking for. So when we review personal statements, that's the lens that we're looking through is content. But I may or may not know you very well. And I may not be able to really make sure that it's an accurate reflection of your path. And again, I don't think, you know, I'm a writing expert. So I would never say that I'm an authority on grammar and syntax and spelling and structure. So you want to make sure you pick your reviewers carefully. Keep your language simple, straightforward, clear, concise, to the point. Prune away repetition. Make sure that, um, again, you're not finding every complicated word in the thesaurus to try to sound smart. Just use language that you would normally use. Consider writing other areas of your application first. I definitely always recommend students start with the work and activity section. I think that's a much easier section to start with. And then, of course, a disadvantage statement if your application has that. And then move on into the personal statement once you've had a little bit of practice with writing. And as hard as it is, try to stay positive, enthusiastic about this process. Personal statement writing um, is usually the first or second 
thing that students dislike the most. If you're pre-med, it's usually the MCAT that you dislike the most. Um, for other professional students, usually personal statements is like the, their least favorite part of preparing a professional school application. It can be very emotional. It can be very cumbersome. It is a process. It's not going to be done the first time you sit down to write your personal statement. It, it's going to be a long process. So try to be positive and embrace that. You have some resources available to you. The Health Professions Advising Center, myself and Charlie, we will review um, personal statements for students who physically attend a personal statement writing workshop. Um, there is a writing center at the Academic Resource Center. You might have a faculty advisor or an honors advisor who might do a lot of like reading and reviewing for you. And then there's books and online resources that we have um, available for you as well um, some in the office some you might have to pay for and some might be free so the nahp is the national association for advisors of health professionals um, it's an association i belong to they have a resource um, writing for success there's some other things um, jessica friedman who's a physician she writes a lot about interviewing and personal statement writing skills um, and there are some good resume building and personal statement writing books available in like half.com for a few dollars or some things even that uc uc davis has available on their website for free